So I, I saw the uh, the notice that it's uh, the cutoff date is the 14th of April. That is, if you deposit thirty dollars to indicate coming, to indicate yeah. that you're coming uh, by the 14th, then you yeah okay. Uh, so husband, it would be good for you to pay for your wife to go to this. <laughs> uh, yeah, it'd be really good. All right. Um, so. <clears throat> So we come now to hear the Bible talk, and uh, today, uh, continuing on our series, uh, Mark's Gospel, uh, so we're on to Mark chapter 4, verses 35 to 41. Sorry, I'm sure um, if you've been in church for a long time, uh, you will be familiar with this story. So let me, uh, let me read it for you. That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly sunk. Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. The disciples walked him and said to him, Teacher, don't you dare if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Lord, let the meditation of my heart, the words of my mouth be pleasing to you. You are rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So what does it look like when the Lord who calms the storm is for us and is with us? What will be church, what will be life like with the Lord who, whom the wind and the waves obey? And this is the question that Jesus is asking his disciples on, on verse 40 of Mark chapter 4. Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you so afraid? Why are you so afraid of death? So afraid that you doubt that Jesus can even help us in death. That Jesus has already overcome death. Why are you so afraid that you don't think that Jesus cares that we are about to perish? Now, brothers and sisters in Christ, you know, this is a challenge that we all face on a daily basis. We are afraid. Usually our lives are run by this fear. You see, this is not why people go to work on Sundays, because we're so afraid that we may not have money, enough money to pay the rent and to buy us food and to pay the bills. This is not why we skip meeting with believers for other more important commitments. We just don't see the importance of fellowshipping with God's people. Is this not why we tell lies when we know that if we tell the truth, it will mean that we will be endangered? So we're so afraid to tell the truth that we lie and we justify by saying that we're only telling white lies. Friends, there's no such thing as white lies. All lies are dark lies. They're all punishable by death. But don't you see that it's because we're so afraid that we sometimes resist compliance with the Word of God and we usually resort to our comfort zones. Because we just don't want to be challenged by the Word of God. We are so used to running church the way it is. We are so used to our traditions, to the way we do church, to the way we do praise and worship, it has to be like this, that we are so afraid to surrender ourselves to the Word of God. 
Is this why we sometimes think that our kids need entertainment, plus the Word of God? Sometimes we do not think that our kids will be interested in the Word of God. We tend to think that if we can mix it up with a little bit of entertainment, then we perhaps can get our kids in the so afraid of just teaching the way of but the word of the Lord to our kids and if we try to entertain them we will have to compete with this world which is so good in entertaining people. We're going to be different, see, but we sometimes are so afraid of just teaching the word of the Lord to our kids because we think that they may not, we may lose their interest. Is not this why we in church, we a lot of churches now have chosen no longer to comply with the word of God, but to endorse the values of this world, you know, ending up endorsing something like homosexuality and gender fluidity. Is it, is, is it, is it not because they're so afraid of standing by the word of God because they will be persecuted by this world? And the church ministers are so afraid to speak out against you know, these, these, uh, these trends because they may lose their jobs and may lose the, the benefits that they yield from the, from the churches, the established churches. See, it is because people are so afraid that we wind up, we wind up endorsing homosexuality only as the values of this culture, the values of this world, because we're so afraid that if we make a stand, we will suffer for it. We may even lose our jobs or lose our friends, lose our lives, lose our livelihood. You know, living in this day and age, I find myself always praying the prayer of the apostles on this little body. Teacher, don't you care that we are about to perish? Because, as I said, you see, we live in a time where biblical values are no longer acceptable in this culture. And we are forced, you see. I mean, we're just happy for people if they, if they want to believe what they want to believe, all those godless values. But you see, we live in a culture where they, will, they want to force us to, to comply with them, to believe what they believe. And if you do not believe what they believe, you're going to lose your status in society, you're going to lose your jobs, you're going to, even at uni. Those of you who are at university, you're facing this because there is no uh, freedom of speech anymore. You can't speak your mind. You will have to conform to certain values that this woke culture are in, you know, have imposed on, on you and in this world. So, You so we're so disturbed about one black man who was killed in somewhere in America. His name is George Floyd. We don't really know who he was, what he did. You know, we, we, we're told by the you know the, 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 the news media that can be trusted he was a criminal. But you see, we're so disturbed by the killing of this black man who we do not know. But not about the tens of thousands of babies that are aborted here in Australia. You see that? See that's no, don't you care that we are perishing that these abortion laws uh, keep on being passed in the power in the parliament and, and slowly and gradually the laws are being proposed to parliament and are passed to prevent us from speaking these kind of truths. You know, even in Victoria today. In Victoria today, if, if I were to preach in Victoria these things that I'm telling you today, and you are unhappy with it. You can just go to the authorities and you can report me and I'll be removed. Because you see, I am preaching a message which is very dangerous. Because it can change you. It can change you if you have these sexual orientations that are acceptable to the society and, and, and the word of God is challenging you. It can change you if your thinking is that, you know, that, that the gender is, is fluid, that is, it's a choice, not something biologically given to you by our God. You see, we are forced to pray with the apostles, Lord, don't you care? 
that we're about to perish because we live in such a culture, in such a time. See, that's a word, isn't it? He calms the storm. He stills the waves and the wind. So how do we know that the Lord cares for us even today? How do, we, how do we know for sure that the Lord does not want us to perish? How do we know that the Lord is in the business of saving us people, saving souls from this evil world? Because of the cross, isn't it? The cross of Jesus is ultimately Jesus saying, I care. I care about you perishing. I care about you losing your salvation. I care about you heading to hell and damnation. I care. You see, <clears throat> this story points us to the cross of Jesus. Where on the cross he shows that he has the ultimate power to silence the raging powers of evil. All kinds of evils that are acting against us, being hostile in this world. In Colossians 2, we're told, you know, Colossians 2, verses 13 to 15, when you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross, and having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the way. You see, ultimately, the forces of evil that are in, at work in this world, they're trying to prevent you from getting to eternal life. And they will do everything in their power to stop you. Jesus on the cross, we're told by Paul, has disarmed, defeated. He has removed the power of those authorities and made a public spectacle of them by triumphing over them by the cross. So, if the wind and the waves obey the Lord Jesus Christ who is in our midst. Even the evil forces of this cancel, this walk culture, are under him too. So how should we live? We should live by being confident in his word. Do you remember who told them to go to the other side? There in verse 35, that day evening came, he said, let us go over to the other side. So when Jesus has spoken his word, he will fulfill it. He will bring it about. He can take us to the other side. You think about eternal life as being the other side of our existence. Only the Lord Jesus has promised he can take us safely to the other side, even through the difficult storms of life. So, how shall we live? Three final observations. One, as the Church of God, we need to be totally confident in the Word of Jesus. The Scriptures, yes, indeed it is the Word of God, but Jesus is the Word. He was there in eternity with God, when God created everything, when God had the plan, laid the plan to redeem the world through His Son. So, how should we live in this cancel, this woke culture that is hostile to us and is trying to do everything to cancel us Christians? Well, by continuing on to hold on to the word of Jesus. Not just the words that we are happy with, because I think that's what the churches are doing now. In the world, there are, in, in most suburbs, there is a community church. Let me say to you, the community church is, is set up to preach what the community believes. And what the community believes, you know, comes from some parts of the Bible, but they will not be preached to you everything that the Bible believes because a lot of what the Bible is saying contradict what the community believes. Do you see that? 
When we say we believe the Bible, we mean the whole Bible. Everything, everything that we do not like in the Bible. We believe, but the Word of God is trustworthy. The Word of God is what can get us across to the other side, to eternal life. Secondly, the world, even the culture, this woke, this cancel culture that we're living in, you know, they want you and me in church to have Jesus Christ. They want us to be different. So that we, because we are different, because we have Jesus, then we can be relevant to them. This is so different. You see, this point comes from the fact that there were other boats there on the Sea of Galilee with this one boat. And you see, when the storm came, it all came on all the boats. But only this one boat where Jesus was could bring in the calmness, you know, the, uh, the, 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 has the power to stop the wind and the waves. So all the other boats on the Sea of Galilee, they needed this one boat to have Jesus on board. And that's us, the church. We are the boat of Christ. You see, we've been told by the church today that in order for us to be relevant to the world, we really need to get rid of Jesus, get rid of his words, Especially those words that are kind of against the culture, so that in order for us to be relevant to this world, in order for the world to find us attractive, we need to get rid of Jesus and his words. That is total opposite of what we find in the story. You know, I always pray that um, if the Lord were to destroy this city tomorrow, like you know, he did to Sodom and Gomorrah, and if there could be only ten righteous people. So remember when Abraham was praying, he asked the Lord from fifty down to ten. And the Lord said, if there were ten righteous people in that city, I could save that city. And it is my prayer. That if the Lord were to look for ten righteous people, he will find it amongst him, amongst us. See, in order for this world to do what they're doing, to be ungodly as they are, we have to be unique. We have to have Jesus. We have to trust in His Word. To have Jesus on this boat, on this, in this church, is to live and abide by His Word. And lastly, when you go through the storms of life, you're never alone as a believer. See, sometimes, you know, when we go through hard times, we tend to question, well, you know, why is God doing this? You know, we, we tend to question, we doubt whether God loves us because He it says, you know, we, sometimes you know, the longer you are Christian, you tend to think that you, be, you you have a special seed in the presence of God. Not for us Christians. The Lord uses the storms of life to test whether your faith is squarely based on Jesus himself and in his words. And so we're never alone. So, friends, let's spend the last few moments, and I ask Sarah to, to play some instrumental. Just to respond to this word in prayer. Let's come together, let's close our eyes and pray. Pray on that. So let's ask the Lord Jesus to strengthen us to have confidence in his word, especially in this time. Lord Jesus Christ, we, we look at this world we can see how it's going to Pray that you will have time to read his word daily and familiarize ourselves with the word of God. Let's all be to pray that we will not be distracted by faces, by emails, and by phone calls, whatever it is, Lord Jesus. You should distract us from reading your word. I pray that we will no longer have time to read your word. Pray that we will be people of prayer. That we show our faith in our Lord who has authority over the wind and the waves. Bringing all our concerns to Him. Please forgive us the times we have.
We don't trust him enough to bring all our concerns to you. We don't esteem that we can do it ourselves. We look at the resources you have provided to us, the financial resources, the strength, the health, and we trust in ourselves. Please forgive us. Help us to be people who trust in you, the man who controls the waters. We pray that the Lord will help us to maintain our uniqueness as the people of Jesus Christ. We don't have to live like this world. We must be different. Pray that the Lord will continue to change us because we are the Jesus people. Lord Jesus, please change us. Help us, Lord Jesus, not just to come to church and then go away and live just the same lifestyle as we came to church. Please, Lord Jesus, humble our lives. Transform our lives, Lord Jesus, our values. Help us to see that you care. Thank God that we know that Jesus cares for us because he has died on the cross. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you that you've shown you care for us by dying on the cross for us. Pray that the Lord Jesus reminds us that when we go through difficult times, sufferings, times of hardships, that we don't go alone, but He is with us. Just as He slept on that boat and being tossed to and fro by the wind and the waves, so also He is being tossed around when we are persecuted, when we suffer. Pray that we will always come to Him and ask for grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. Lord Jesus, please. Please, Lord Jesus. Help us to realize that to be people of prayer who come to you every time to pray for grace and for mercy. We've made ourselves now, Lord Jesus, we go out from here to the world. We pray, Lord Jesus, that we will be people who are confident in the world, who are unique because we are your people. And we know that you are always, always with us, even in our times of suffering. And we pray and ask all these things in your sons, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.